Okay, thank you for stopping. Um, as you see on your flyer, it's a three minute tour. You will see me counting down from three to two to one to make sure I stay within the three minute time limit. Um, the tour is about streets named after Malcolm X around the country and in also a few in other parts of the world. Um, and you'll see me counting down again from three to two to one. And I'm going to give you three facts that have to do with the number three, three that have to do with the number two, and three that have to do with the number one. Okay, ready? Here we go. Um, there are three boroughs, three decades, and three martins for the number three. Three boroughs, meaning there are three boroughs in New York City that have a street named after Malcolm X. We are standing on one in Manhattan right now in Harlem. Um, there's also one in Queens. And there's one in my neighborhood in Brooklyn in Bedford-Stuyvesant. Um, there are also three decades. If you look on your handout, you'll see that the earliest Malcolm X Boulevards, um, or the earliest uh, information I have about the street names being changed, shows that they were changed almost three decades ago. Um, I want to double check that information because I found it uh, researching on the internet and people that I've talked to face to face have sometimes stories that conflict with that. So I want to double check with the city records first. But based on the research I've done so far, um, the earliest street name changes took place about three decades ago. There are also three Martins, meaning that there are three streets um, that were not only renamed after Malcolm X, but also positioned in such a way that they intersect with streets named after Martin Luther King Jr., which is an interesting statement, like a secondary statement to make. Um, and I often ask people, what um, what do you think the people who position those streets that way so that Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X intersect um, were trying to say by doing that? Um, uh, so again, there are three of those. Um, we're on one right now, actually, uh, Harlem's Malcolm X Boulevard intersects with NMLK. Some people don't notice it because it's 125th. 125th is actually also called uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Um, so this one intersects, um, the one in D.C. does, and also the one in Los Angeles is set up that way. Um, and then the number two is uh, two arches, two African countries, and two hidden ones. So the, uh, most streets, as you can see on the map, are uh, straight. On the map, they're either vertical or horizontal. horizontal. However, there are two that are shaped like arches. Boston's is shaped like a half a rainbow, and the one for Kampala, Uganda, is it bends, as you can see on the map. And then there are two that are hidden, meaning that um, if you look on your sheet, uh, you'll see Stratford, Connecticut, and Omaha, Nebraska. When I went to Google those to find maps of them, they didn't come up in Google Maps. However, I know they're there because I've seen photos of the street signs. So someone actually sent me a photo from Nelson, actually, the intern for this project for the summer, sent me a photo um, of a Malcolm X uh, street in Stratford, Connecticut, as he was driving along it. And then in Omaha, there's a website um, dedicated to him. Um, near this for the site where he lived at, um, and they have a photo of the streets on there, um, which leads me to believe though that there also may be others. Um, ooh, that's the time. There may be others in other parts of the country um, that just aren't showing up on maps for whatever reason. Sometimes when streets are renamed, um, the the new name doesn't show up on maps for whatever reason. Um, and then that brings us to the number one. Um, and so there's one kind of like life timeline, uh, one block and one mission. And by one life timeline, what I mean is that if you look at your handout, you'll see um, that there is a street named after Malcolm X in every place where there's like an important part of his, uh, important point in his life. So in Omaha, Nebraska, where he was born, um, in Lansing, Michigan, where he lived as a youth, in Boston, where he moved to live with his sister and kind of became Detroit Red, um, and then uh, in Harlem, where he made a name for himself and rose to fame after coming out of prison and became the Malcolm X that we know. Um, and then in Elmhurst, Queens, where he lived with his family in the later years of his life. Um, each of those places has a street named after him. So in a way, like it's a map, but it also like the streets form a map, but they also kind of form like a timeline of his life. Um, and then one block, there is actually one street that's just one block long. Um, the one in Queens, if you look, you'll see it's 97th Street between 23rd and 24th Ave is Malcolm X place. It's just one block right where his house was, or where his house still is. Um, and then one mission, and this might just be me kind of wanting to try it all together, tie it all together, but I feel like, um, these streets, uh, the more I research them, it seems like they all kind of must have had this underlying, um, emphasis behind changing them and, you know, wanting to, to highlight Malcolm X's historical significance and pass it on to future generations and then also to get people to think about, um, his story, um, his sense of personal evolution, maybe for me, or his um, his role in uh, civil rights and human rights for others. Um, a number of these streets are in predominantly black neighborhoods, but some of them are don't seem to be. 
Um, and so it's interesting to see like how his story transcends in some ways um, and becomes something like what it means to people from other cultural backgrounds and how it can mean different things to different people, but it's an inspiration to all. And that is my time. I'm like way over. Um, thank you for listening. Um, and remember, you can pay by writing a postcard from one Malcolm X to another, adding a Malcolm X tree to the map or telling a friend about Malcolm, about mapping Soville.